Um, hello and welcome to this lecture. My name remains Bolo Kwade, fondly called Realtor Z, and I'm the co founder here at Zero T, a real estate company which is targeted at helping the younger generation to make smarter and safer real estate investments. Right? We've been looking at very insightful stuff right, in our real estate investing series, which has been aimed or you know targeted towards helping you make basic smart and safe real estate investment decisions and in this particular lecture we're going to be looking at the 8x and there's a reason why i said not z and that's simply because this is not the entirety of real estate documentation the truth is that you're going to encounter you know, very wide range. However, what we have done is to select the most frequent things that you most likely come about, you most likely hear, right? Every other thing is, you know, on a higher level. And the truth is you can as well reach out to me if you have any issues, if you have any questions, you know, concerning real estate documentation, you know, maybe something I didn't cover here, you know, that'll be able to help you through that. So let's dive straight in. But before we do that, I want to please let you know that this particular, you know, um, lecture is a bit detailed. And why is that? Because remember, like I said, when you purchase real estate, you are literally purchasing the paper, the documentation, right? And once you have a wrong documentation, your whole land is in jeopardy. You can literally lose your land, you can go to court, you can be jailed, you can be sued once your documentation is wrong. You can be scammed. When you hear that they scammed somebody of real estate, or, or maybe, you, yeah, it doesn't actually mean that land was not there. It really just means, you know, maybe they cooked up some false documents. So this is usually where you have to pay very serious attention to your documentation after my best to put out every possible thing you will need at this level um to make or to understand real estate documentation right so i want you to please pay very you know um serious attention in this particular lecture i'm going to take my time to explain use analogies right just to ensure that you understand right and you may have to go over this maybe more than once to have a full grasp of this so yeah there are four core documents you probably will be dealing with at this point number one is a document of your land title number two is your contract of sales number three is your deed number four is your survey so let's start with the land titles listen um prior to 1979 right i don't want to you know take too much time on the history um lands were it was basically when you get to a land and you just settle down there for a certain period of time um that land becomes your own right so you just go there and just stay there and for a certain period of time but then the the law i want to pay serious attention that governs lands in nigeria is called the land use act 1979 this is what governs how lands are used currently in nigeria at the time of this you know, train. And let me see. The act vests all urban lands, urban lands comprised in the territory of each state, except those vested in the federal government or its agencies, solely to the governor. And I'm going to put this in simpler terms: to hold in trust for the people and to allocate to individuals and organizations for residential among other use. In other words, what he's simply saying is prior to 1979, 
lands were you know just on but once 1979 and this actress simply seen all the lands in the state the power of those lands are given to the governor so in a real sense the government owns all the land in that state right the government owns all the land and some of you are shocked like eh i thought i have a land how come they i'm going to explain all of that so let's start from there like i said all the land in the state are vested in the governor and this is where i want to start from because it's vested in the governor the land um or all these things usually vary from state to state because state a will not be the same as state b right so um i'm as at the time of this recording i'm 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 currently, you know, training or we have helping people with their property acquisition, you know, not just in Lagos, but then in Abuja and also um, Port Harcourt and Ibadan, right? So those places we have, you know, very high degree knowledge because that's what we're dealing with. That's why expanding into other states, I usually take my time to study and also, you know, um, acquit myself with lawyers in that place with property lawyers in that place and that's what you should do if you want to start investing in a state you must be very cautious to ensure that the you are familiar with the land regulations of that state does that make sense and you know in real estate that's why one of the best things to do is networking Right. So sometimes, you know, somebody is more domiciled in this state than I am. I say, okay, you know, um, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. I know this. I want you to help me check this out. Right. Really, really important. So that's where I want to start from. So we'll start with land titles. What exactly is a title? What is a land title? So I'm going to answer that now. What exactly is a land title? Now, and I'm going to put this in three. Now, listen, a land title basically is a document that proves ownership of a piece of land in very simple terms. Ownership of piece of land this is basically a land title so remember i said when you buy a property usually you're not actually buying that land you are buying these documents that's what you're paying for the ownership are you with me so really really important so if your title is not perfected properly your ownership is questionable are you with me so let me move on now i want to pause and say and split land titles into three categories number one i want is what we call equitable titles and number two sorry number two is what we call i call i call this in progress and then we now have legal titles every property that you encounter i'm going to use lagos as a case study or as the core state in this lecture right like i said if you're in another state you reach out to me or you can reach out to a property lawyer there and she'll be able to give you thorough um, explanation of what works in that state right equitable title in progress and legal title now this in progress is not exactly a title right and i'm going to explain so this is how i like to divide it so what are legal titles what are equitable titles i want you to please pay very serious attention 
what are legal titles versus equitable title now listen when we're talking about legal titles because the you know the overall operations of land is guided by law are you with me the legal title is the legal ownership the legal ownership which comes from right to control the property in compliance with the law so literally let me say it in plain terms if you ever go to a court of law the owner that they recognize is the person who has a legal title they recognize that person are you with me however an equitable title just you know you are not exactly per se um legally recognized as the owner so i like to give an example like this if this is person a and this is person b now if i buy person a buys let's say a car from person b person b will give person a probably a receipt now in the real sense who is the owner of the car now the owner of the car is actually person a but you see until person a takes the time to go and change the particulars of that vehicle and all of that to his name in the real sense if they ever go to the court of law well legally person b is still the owner however the car is now for person a does that make sense right so i like to say this to explain equitable and you know legal title for equitable title um the process of the acquisition may have been carried out does that make sense that you paid for the land and all of that however um the law the legality backing that transaction has not been finalized does that make sense right so in the real sense the equitable titles are sort of weak weaker the legal titles are the strong ones are you me that are recognized and i'm going to run you through this don't worry so usually the most frequent equitable title i to pass it it's sort of just a, a state of the land it's called freehold right that's what you hear many times if you're in Lagos state you hear that in the ekwe axis what we call freehold and what's freehold freehold is simply saying the property is free from government acquisition and you may be like what on earth is government acquisition don't worry in the next lecture we're going to talk about that so it's saying it's free from government acquisition right like i said it's not exactly per se a title it's just saying the status of that land that this land is freehold so if you buy a freehold property um, it usually just has an equitable title does that make sense freehold equitable title right so let's talk about legal titles then we'll talk about the in progress and then i'll just run you through again you know a summary so it makes a lot of sense to you so when we talk about legal title remember i said all the lands in the state belong to the state government or the state government and it's under the 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 discretion of the state governor to release lands are you with me so you know you know ask yourself a question i thought there were people who owned this land before 1979 what is going to happen to them which is the first title i want to say so um what exactly happened like i said is people settle you know communities own lands and all of that and then the government comes and says so let's say this land used to be for community a the government now comes and says oh all the land in the state belongs to the state it means automatically community a doesn't have any land are you with me so what the government did 
are you doing? Is they said, wow, it's not exactly amazing for community in, you know, a communal land that has been owned for generations to just be taken away. So let's do something, right? Let's take a portion of that land, right? And give it to that community, right? So sometimes it can be a portion, sometimes it can be a whole but usually it's a portion. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's give it to that community, right? So that process where the government releases land to the indigenous people, the settlers, you know, they follow legal protocols, is called excision. So usually, when they say a land is ex, you know, has gone through excision, it means that portion of land has been released. Usually, like I said, to the indigenous of that place, right? Are you with me? And so it has been excised. Now, once a land has been excised, they will give an official document called a gazette. And the gazette is the official document to the excision effect. Are you with me? And it's also recorded. There is like a, a directory of all gazetted lands. Are you with me? So if you ever see a maybe a poster or somebody saying he wants to sell you a property and the title is excision it is good but the best status is excision with gazette or sometimes you just see gazette which means the legal title is 100 percent complete so this is a good property this is a hundred percent green flag for your title does that make sense so that's excision. Now the second title is um, so like I said, excision with gazette. Number two is let me put this excision with gazette. With gazette. So some excisions have, have been completed, but they have not been gazetted. So that's like 90%. Right? So um, like I said, if you want to tie all your T's and cross all your I's, you want to have your excision also have a gazette. So number two is what we call the C of O, which I think is the most popular. C of O is called, is short for Certificate Kit of Occupancy. So remember, I said all the lands in the state belong to the state government, the governor, and all of that. And the governor, you know, all the powers of that land is vested in the governor. Now, a C of O is a document that is issued by the government in Nigeria that certifies that you are the legal owner. Are you with me? So, like I said, um, let's say this is the entire state, let's say this is Lagos State, and you now buy a small plot somewhere in maybe Lekki, the governor will give you a C of O. Are you with me? So the C of O is a certificate of ownership that says you own this property. Usually, let me tell you, even legal titles, if the government wants to demolish your house, as if it's not under you know zones of government acquisition, and you have a C of O, the government must compensate you because you're actually the owner. Now, a few things about C of O is that number one, it's issued for 99 years. So really, nobody eternally owns land. It's actually issued just for 99 years. So what happens is that after 99 years, you have to go and renew your C of O. Does that make sense? So yeah, nobody can own a land more than 99 years in Lagos. Are you with me? So the certificate of ownership is another good title. In fact, if you see a certificate of ownership with you know, sorry, property with the certificate of ownership, it's a really good title, right? It's honestly one of, these are the three titles I'm going to explain to you today are really the best titles, you know, or maybe, should I say, no, maybe, maybe I don't say the best, but like I said, you not have any issues usually if you go for properties with this title, so C of O, right? So C of O is very, very important, right? Now, 
Listen, the C of O can only be issued once for a property. So there's nothing like um, if I buy pro- if you, let's say you're the first to buy the property you get, and you processed your title, you got a C of O. If I buy the property from you, they will not give me C of O again. It can only be issued once. So whenever a property has a C of O, are you with me? And let's say, like I said, this C of O was given like the owner is Mr. Z. Now, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm old or something and I want to sell this property to the next person, Mr. A. Like I said, I have a C of O. This Mr. A will not have a C of O. So what will happen is you now have what we call um, a governor's consent. So now that I've sold the land to Mr. A, like I said, Mr. A would not get a C of O. Mr. A would get what we call a governor's consent. And what's a governor's consent? A governor's consent is simply saying, um, remember, all the powers of a land, the, the, all the powers of land in the state are vested in the governor. Right? He's saying, okay, I have consented to this transaction, that this transaction is now owned by Mr. A. Does that make sense? So, if you hear a title of a property as governor's consent, it is also very... So, if you hear um, a title as governor's consent, it is very, very, very valid. You can go ahead and make that purchase once you can verify. Does that make sense? So, governor's consent is also... A title right and let me chip in one here like I said um, this is not a thorough it's just to make you aware so when you say you want to buy a property and you say what's the what's the title of it and this is a freehold title you know that that's an equitable title it's not exactly in quotes um, legally recognized it's not 100% strong but if they say the property is C of O or the property has a gazette the property has a governor's consent. Those three are usually very strong. All right, they are legal titles. Right, so let me chip in one an extra is what we call Supreme Court Court Judgment. So what exactly is the Supreme Court Judgment? So let's say um, two of us we are fighting over a piece of land. And I think I gave this example in one of our resources. Um, me and person A and person B are fighting over a piece of land. Then we go to the court. Now, there are different levels of court in Nigeria, you know, at lower levels. But the highest court is the Supreme Court. Right? So, if we are fighting over this plot of land here, this land here and we go to let's say court the first level of court they can say this property is for person a we go to the next level they say the property is for person b we go to the next level they say the property is for person a are you with me but once we get to the supreme court right I don't know if you know about you know legalities, but if I'm not okay with the decision that the court made, I can appeal to a higher court. So if I go to a higher court, the higher court can reverse the decision if they feel you know the appeal that was made was not correct. Sorry, the judgment that was made was not correct. Right? So let me, like I said, this is um, let's say court B here is a higher court than court A. So if court A said this land belongs to person A and person B wasn't satisfied, he said I'm escalating the matter and he took it to a higher court, maybe court B. Now court B can either uphold the judgment of court A or they can choose to take it higher. So if they take it higher, they can simply say, you know what, um, 
um, we feel from your documentation or from what we have checked through this land actually does not belong to person a it now belongs to person b automatically that land now belongs to person b but the highest court in nigeria is the supreme court so when the supreme court gives a judgment you can't appeal any further does that make sense so that's why we always say the supreme court judgment is important so let me give you an example imagine when this lower court you know gave a the lower court gave a judgment that the owner is person a you now came and bought land from person a however person b now appealed and they have already sold the land to you to person b sorry to court the the next court that's the higher court when he appealed to the higher court the higher court said no this property is not for person a it's not for person b but you have already bought from person a then there's going to be a problem so if you ever want to buy based on you know court you want to ensure that it is the supreme court and why is this it's quite simple if it's a supreme court they can appeal for that so that judgment is final does that make sense that judgment is final so it's very 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 important that um you know in your titles you want to have supreme court judgments if you're going so if you share that you know um the property has a supreme court judgment you want to ensure that or you you can buy that property it's a good property does that make sense right so let's do a quick recap we talked about the equitable titles we talked about um improve okay i just drew it i haven't explain that and then we now talked about so a land usually is in one of these three phases you know the legal titles um so now legal equitable titles here i told you that the most common one you would um here is freehold and i explain how that is not exactly per se a title is just the status of the land and the legal titles we've talked about excision let me change this to red so it doesn't mix with the fonts. Excision with gazettes. We've talked about the C of O. We've talked about um, the governor's consent. Consent. We've talked about Supreme Court judgment. Exactly. So usually these are the most common ones you will find um, for your titles. So now let's look at what we call a field I call the in progress, which people used to deceive a lot. So I have to explain. So let's see I buy a title with uh, equitable title, a property with equitable title. That's a freehold. Freehold just says, you know what, um, like I said, that that is free from the any form of government acquisition. What will I do to secure my land? Listen, you can process your property from equitable titles to um, legal titles. So if my land, I bought a freehold land, I can go to the government, right? That's the state agency. And this, the agency in the state responsible for, you know, property, this varies from, you know, state to state. I say, okay, I bought this land. I have this land. I want to process it. So the state can now say, okay, ask me for the relevant documents. And they say, you know, open a file for you and you start processing listen that point where you are processing sometimes it can take four five years depends on you know the state depends on the number of applications and all of that are you with me so currently when you are processing that point is what we call in progress does that make sense 
So if you check some people and you ask them what is the title on the land, they can tell you something like C of O in progress or C of O in view. Now, this kind of land have pros and cons. The pros are that, I mean, they've started the processing. Where most people don't tell you is not every application is successful. So what they'll tell you usually, they say, oh, don't worry, don't worry, the land has a CFO, but I've already decided processing it. It will just not. Let me be real with you. It takes a lot of time to process, number one. Number two, sometimes it's not successful. If they are not really satisfied that you are the actual owner, they can revoke it and not grant you the application. Right? So some people say, oh, no, it's just a little while. They used to deceive you so you can buy that property. But like I said, um, you must be cautious. While, like I said, um, it's, it's a step slightly ahead of the equitable titles, it is not yet at the legal titles. So in progress, properties of their titles are not yet certified. And they are not exactly titles again. They are just that. So the truth is that um, it is in progress, but it's still an equitable title. Does that make sense? And let me tell you something. Anytime, because some people actually don't have anything in progress. They just lie to you. So let me tell you something. When you have a COVO in progress, usually in you know the agency or the authority responsible, they have started working on something. Maybe they have started their documentations. This you they have a file number. Are you with me? So they tell you that it's in progress, tell them to give you, you know, the file number. That way you can go and check. And I'm going to show you how to do a search on the property. So in progress or in view, you can also see excision in progress. In progress or in view or in view. So um, it means the excision is happening and it doesn't exactly mean it will be successful. So if you are buying lands that have this in progress, you want to ensure that you are making informed decisions. Does that make sense? Really, really important. So I've seen cases where you know they've assured the person, oh, don't worry, don't worry, the excision is going to be it's going to be complete and all of that. And you find out that you have bought the land and the government didn't give excision. So it's still you've literally bought a government land. And that is a lot of problem. So um, that's that about that. So again, in summary, let me draw this for you again. So we have the equitable. And you know, um, the funny part, um, let me finish right in progress. And then the legal. Lands that are equitable title are cheapest. This ones may be relatively cheap, and these ones are the most expensive. And it should make sense to you now why. So if you want to buy a land with legal title, it will have about, um, you want to have about, um, well, as at the time of this recording in Lagos, you want to have about six to nine million, right? But with about one to two million Naira, you can get this in Lagos. And the cheapest, well, anyway, we are, this is getting relatively expensive, but with about 1 million, we should still be able to get this, right? So this is about 1 point, let's say 1.5 to 3 million. You get an progress now, right? And legal titles, you are going to be talking, and this is the cheapest, you know, I know currently, right? But from here, you honestly be here in 30, 20, and somebody says, it's you not know, the same line. It's not the same like right? Like we see, in land, you do what you can and leave what you can't. You, you cannot predict whether somebody wants to come and steal your land tomorrow, right? You can't. But what you can do is to tidy your documentations. So even, anyone, even though anyone attempts to do that with your documentations, you can swiftly and smoothly win the case. So I think I've done justice to the basic land title so anytime you want to buy property ask the same question what title does it have and don't let them bamboozle you <laughs> don't let anybody try and play your head right 
um, um, titles are very important. So I'll quickly brush through the rest. That's the main thing. So let's move on to contract of sales. Now, depending on where you buy your property from, but most times it's advisable to buy your property from a real estate company. Uh, maybe in subsequent lectures, not in this. I'm going to explain that you can buy your property from an individual. Um, you can own a property, you know, from an individual, from a government, maybe through a will, as a gift. Um, and you can also buy from a company. You right. This is the most frequent. And why is this? Because most times, a real estate company will not just sell, sorry, a plot of land. What they will do is they sell um, lands in an estate. Right? So you see plots of land, and then they'll do the basic amenities like road, you know, water, maybe their recreation facilities and all of that. Right? So what exactly is a contract of sales? I've seen a lot of problem, you know, I've had to step in i've had to you know when i'm helping clients purchase property we have to ensure contract of sales are they are aligned with the clients so let me give you an example a contract of sale um basically is an agreement between the buyer and the seller stating one the considerations setting the obligations and other terms for transfer of ownership very important other terms for transfer of ownership so what do i mean by the considerations um, and the obligations and terms of ownership it's very simple if i'm buying land from you what are the terms and conditions? Very simple. So let me give an example of that real estate company. Like you are buying a land in an estate. Some days, your contract of sales would um, clearly state that you must build on that land within 10 years. Maybe because they want their estate to be developed. Do you understand? They don't want, they want the way to be So they say, you are purchasing your property from us within five years. You must be able to That is, um, that will be included in the contract of sales. Or that should be. Anything that's not included, they can't just jump on you. Some other people say, well, um, you're going to be paying um, monthly estate fees and all of that some people say okay we don't mind you not uh, building on your house however you must clear your land consistently does that make sense right some people say um if it's an estate like i said um, they could say things like we don't want pets in our estates there are certain essays that say we don't even want generators we will give you guys power, we will give you guys water. For example, Victoria Garden City, that's a, a VGC in, 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 you know, on the island, um, their water is centralized. Right? Um, when it comes to entry, you have your access cards and all of that. Right? Some estates do not allow, so you know, basically those are the contracts of, states, of sales, stating very clearly the terms and conditions of purchase of the property. And if you are not comfortable with any contract of sales, you can as well just leave it. Right? So, um, you want to have your titles box ticked. You want to have your contract of sales. Listen to me carefully. Do not pay for a land before viewing the contract. Ask for the contract of sales before you buy ask for it because once you pay and you sign that contract you know um it's enforceable by the law to so ensure you ask is there a, i want to say the contract of sales um before so now some days you know the contract of sales is merged with the offer letter right offer letter is simply telling you what they're offering you to buy so you want to ensure that those t's are crossed those i's are dotted now let's move on 
<laughs> I remember a scenario of let, let's go to the next one surveys. So what exactly is a survey? What is a survey? I remember a scenario of you know somebody we were we were getting a property for. So the person spoke to her friend concerning the property. And then when the person spoke to her friend concerning the property, the person <laughs> So both of them went for a visit to the site. I usually go with my clients on visits to sites, but you know, I think my schedule did not afford me that luxury of time to do so that day. So, you know, we sent a driver, we sent, you know, um, a representative, you know, just go through with them. And they got there, you know, um, this is the parcel of land, this is the estate and all of that. And the guy began to say, um, no, now, if, you know, usually when they say a plot of land, they'll tell you that it's from here to that pool over there, that electric pool. If you see that pool, that's the end of your land. And he said, where is the, in quote, pole demarcating the end of the land? And you know, when they told that to me, I was laughing. You know, I eventually had a conversation with him, explaining that, you know, that probably traditionally was how they did it. They would just put one pole here to demarcate, <laughs> you know, your plot of land. But let me tell you the truth. Um, when you're buying hectares, you really cannot be saying, see where that rating is. That's the end of it. No, that's not exactly how it works. Right. So what is a survey? Right. What exactly is a survey? Right. So a survey usually is a graphical, a diagrammatic um, representation of the exact location of your land right the exact location of your land the exact location of what your land what does that mean it's it's used to show the boundaries of your land right so let me let's say this is the entire state right now where is your land so what happens is when the the survey will come and say this exact position this is the land of person a so you have your survey your survey plan so you are not actually so this usually contains coordinates right coordinates so pick coordinate one coordinate two three four none of that right so anybody who picks those coordinates and goes to the necessary authorities it will be in quotes it would it will reflect if properly done that that land is for you does that make sense so let me give you let me explain or let me go further on service there are two types of service number one is provisional and I want you to listen very well and registered survey. So what is provisional survey? Provisional survey is very simple. I literally can go get a random surveyor. Tell him, please help me survey this land. And when he surveys it, he gives that survey plan to me. Once he gives that survey plan to me, that is a provisional survey, right? And we're going to see the difference. I have graphic, you know, pictures to differentiate between this. But when we're talking about a registered survey, I don't just go to um, a random survey. What I actually do is I go to the government. Like I said, there are central agencies per states. This land is my own. So what you go and do is you go and do what we call the, you lodge it in. You go and lodge that plot of land in, you know, the directory per se. So when you do that, um, the register it. Can you see where the word registered survey comes from? Register it once they are satisfied that this plot of land become belongs to you so anybody who goes on that land and takes coordinates coordinates right and then goes to 
that authority, they will find out that this land belongs to you. Register to you. So that's the difference, right? So provisional survey, in fact, the house where I'm staying, you can come and survey it. It doesn't mean it's your own. You can go to the land that anybody just call a surveyor, survey this place for me. So provisional survey is usually cheaper. Sometimes it goes for as low as uh, currently 50,000 naira. Right? But when we're talking about registered survey, you can, you can hear registered survey as high as 250,000, 300,000. And some of you don't know the difference, right? And some of you don't know why you need to do a registered survey. So your know, provisional survey is good, but um, you know, tidying up your documentation to the maximum possible, a registered survey is the best. Does that make sense? Um, um, it's the best. So let's move on. Let me quickly pause and show you this. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see this properly. I try to get some to differentiate. Um, a re- this a register from Prussia. Now, I'm sorry, it's not exactly all that clear. Um, this document I usually scan. So let's look at this one. Look carefully here. What will you see? Plan showing property said to belong to, and then they put a person's name there at Ogombo Town and all of that and all of that. Plan said to belong to. So what happens is notice how they use the clause said to belong to. When you see something like that said to belong to, it's usually saying the surveyor is trying to, in case there's any case, remove his hand. He said they say it belongs to him. <laughs> so this is a provisional survey. So whether or not this is true or not, we really cannot tell. But this is how you see provisional surveys. And can you see the diagram of the land telling you where the land is? Now look at a registered right notice um how he has um office of the surveyor general can you see the stamp notice how it says free from known government acquisition and you notice this red notice it's not here and notice you know this survey is more detailed right and all of that and you know you probably not see should to belong to here said to belong to so that's the difference between a registered survey and a provisional survey i won't take too much time to go 100 percent into details it's a lot more right we're going to have training sessions um all about survey plans and then we'll end with the last one for this particular lecture which is deeds what is a deed a deed is simply a document that transfers title to a new owner, right? So, if I buy a property, I want to sell it to you, I must give you what we call a deed. Now, there are many different kinds of deeds, deed of assignment, deed of gift, and all of that. But the most frequent one that you will see is deed of assignment especially if you are buying from a real estate company right you see a deed of assignment like i said um if somebody gives you a land it's deed of gift right like i said there are many kinds of deeds but the main thing is um um it must it must it must be it, it must be it, it, it transfers title right transfers the ownership so some people buy a land and they just get receipts receipt does not transfer title even though you have paid a deed is what you need so anytime you're buying a property you want to check the title it's a real estate company you want to see their contract of sales offer letter however they put it 
you want to when you are done they should give you a registered survey or provisional survey right so sometimes the estate will have a registered survey and they will now give you the option of whether you want a registered survey of your land and then you know usually um at allocation or handover they will give you the two these four documents are very very important now two things it's very important that you you are careful not to um, look at these documents alone always involve a lawyer now a deed for example must be prepared by a lawyer it's not something you can pay you so it but because these things may involve some costs some people like to you know bypass it and you know the truth is that eventually you'll be penny and pound foolish because if you get into a real estate issue right or a land issue a land toss or buy a wrong property then you are scampering all over the place when you could have just um done the right thing in the first place so ensure contract of sales deeds um land titles these three things are verifiable by a lawyer and your service obviously by survey all right um some do this um how do i check how do i check there's something that i can help you do our legal team can help you you, you have a property you want us to check through for you obviously to come at the cost but i mean the cost of um checking through and verifying i guarantee you is nothing compared to the cost of hiring a lawyer if you need to start arguing a in a, you know in a court case or even having the land itself being a scam right so i'm sure you've gained a lot of value from um this particular lecture once again, my name is Roto Z from Zero T, which is a company that is dedicated to seeing the younger generation invest safer and smarter in real estate. See you on the next lecture. <music>